And the third speaker is Nuria Livier, and uh, she's from a, a different field. So she's from Telefonica, where she's the scientific director. And she was a founder of user data and media intelligence research team in Telefonica. Um, and uh, she's written on, on using big data with a particular focus on using big data for the public good and using uh, big data for guiding public health practices and policies. So, Nuria, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation to be here. So I guess I'll just start with the answer to the question, and I think the future of national statistics is really bright and exciting thanks to the existence of big data, and now I'll try to explain why. Um, I'm not an official statistician, I'm a computer scientist, uh, but I like classical music. So I guess for the past uh, eight years I've been dealing with pop and rock music, despite my musical taste. Um, as I'm not an official statist, I don't work for any national official statistics office, the first thing I did when coming to this panel was to really understand better what are the official statistics and, and, and see how big data can help. And, related to the work that we have been done doing in my team. So a lot of the official statistics relate to population, knowing how many people live in a country or in a city, by age, by life expectancy, gender, gender gap uh, in terms of pace or in terms of labor force, employment, how many people are employed or unemployed, the economy, which can refer to, so the probably obsolete GDP and other measures of economic growth, trade information, exports, imports, environment information, land use, water supply consumption, chemical use, et cetera, and energy, for example, energy consumption. So if we think about those measures and we think about the amount of data that is available today because of the digitization of the physical world and the digitization of our interactions with the physical world, we can probably all of us imagine a lot of situations where big data can help make inferences or better quantify these measures. Um, in my group, uh, the kind of big data that we've been uh, focusing on is data as it is collected by the mobile network infrastructure. Um, and a lot of it is being CDRs, which you've referred to, which is called detailed records, which is data that is generated when a person makes or receives a phone call, sends or receives an SMS, or connects to data. And all this data is obviously fully anonymized and in most cases aggregated, but it still can be seen as a sensor of human behavior, and particularly of larger scale human behavior. So the challenge that we have been uh, dealing with in my, in my research team has been how can we use this data as a proxy of human behavior, and what kinds of behavior can we infer from this data that could be useful for better policy making or for better official statistics. And particularly, we have been focusing on developing countries because those are the countries where there is much fewer official statistics information, where the infrastructure to collect this data is much less developed. But at the same time, 90% of the population has a mobile phone. So just to give some examples, uh, we've been able to uh, infer socioeconomic status from how people are using their phone, or uh, we've been able to detect the impact of floodings in Mexico by looking at the changes of the activity of the cell tower antennas, uh, which is very important because when there is a natural disaster or a national emergency, most of the emergency relief agencies need to know where to send the help and how much help to send. And if they don't have a sense of how many people are affected and where they are, it's very difficult to make decisions. But if we can use the changes in activity of the cell towers as a sensor of the areas that are the most affected, then we could really help make better decisions. We've also been exploring the value of this data for public health. We did a case study during the H1N1 flu outbreak in Mexico where we could quantify the impact that the measures that the Mexican government took in order to contain the spread of the H1N1 flu back in 2009, we could quantify the impact that those measures had on the actual spread of the disease. And again, this was something that it was impossible to answer before the existence of big data, because the only way you can answer these questions is by doing questionnaires 
uh, by hand or looking at police reports. And this is a very tedious, expensive, and long process, which if you're dealing with a uh, risk of a pandemic where every hour counts, is not feasible to do. Um, so these are just some examples. I'm sorry I'm going so quickly. Uh, if any of you is curious, I can talk for a long time about any of these examples. But um, I hope that they illustrate that in no me by no means big data is going to replace official statistics, but I think it's a really powerful tool that can really enrich and help um, official statistics. And above all, uh, if, our, if the goal of official, of official statistics is to better understand and characterize the world, I think thanks to the existence of big data, we can really shed a lot of light on you know, what's happening in the world and you know, help make better decisions thanks to that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.